Hey, Vince, so you've painted like 400 armies, right? Yeah, I don't know. Not that many, but I've painted several armies. What's up, man? All right, hit me with the wisdom. How do I paint my army super fast? There's a couple really important things you have to do. I Make sure you're writing these down. All right, you ready for them? There's three of them. First, make sure you pick the right force. Mm -hmm. I cannot emphasize this enough. Make sure it's something simple, something that you can easily paint don't by any stretch pick anything that has like i don't know a lot of brocaded armor around the edge or something like that second make sure you use every time saving tool you can so really lean heavily on the airbrush or oil paints or things like that so you can get quick blends and really make the army look good fast oh yeah yeah, yeah. that makes total sense for sure third be reasonable don't go crazy don't get too nuts don't paint a whole stack of boxes just because you feel like it pick a simple 2000 point army and go. Oh yeah. Yeah, these are delicious nuggets of wisdom, Vince. Of course, man. Always happy to help, brother. Good luck. Hey there, hobby friends. It's good to have you back. You know, having a fully painted army that you're proud of for your game of choice is one of the most awesome feelings in our hobby. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most overwhelming tasks to try to complete. So what I did was make a quick list of all the excuses and reasons that we have for not getting our armies painted. And I'm gonna try to address them all in one fell swoop as I try to complete my Night Lord's army. The first one is time. Look, we've all got a hundred other things going on in our lives, but I think we could commit to two hours a night for one week. So that's what I'm going to do. Monday through Friday, only two hours to paint each night. And then when I get to Saturday and Sunday, I think I'm going to up it to around four hours. I think that's doable on a weekend. So in one week, I can complete this army. The second is the amount of detail we're going to put in the army. Yes, you could just spray paint the colors from above so they look like they're made of stone or made of ghostly material, but that's not how most of us want our armies painted. So what I'm going to do is take an army that has a ridiculous amount of detail in my KS Space Marines here. Every little bit of trim. Ugh. And speaking of airbrush, number three is no airbrush. At least for the majority of the army, all the basics of the army will be all done without an airbrush. And at the end, I'm going to show a couple of cool tricks where I use the airbrush, but also explain how they can be done without. And the final reason for not getting your army painted that we're going to address today in this army paint is skill. Nothing that we do today requires a high level of skill in miniature painting to pull off. So if I can do it, so can you. All right, it's Sunday night. Tomorrow I start the army and I need to get everything primed yet tonight. So tomorrow after work, I can get my two hours in and start cranking out. Hopefully between now and then I can also come up with what my plan and scheme is so I can just knock those steps out one after another instead of winging it because otherwise this is going to be interesting. I'm a big believer of getting your army all ready to go so when you want to get started painting, everything is done. And for me, that meant that I got to put on some of these awesome little stones that I got from Spell Crow Miniatures on all the bases. And then I just slapped on some watered down PVA glue and some dried dirt from my yard and bam, my basing is done. Right off the bat, let's get to our base coat application. For me, the main color is Night Lord's Blue. And instead of grabbing an airbrush, I'm going to actually actually grab my Artist Opus dry brush set and I'm going to stipple on all of my base colors. Now this isn't just a poor man's version of creating base coats with an airbrush, it's actually better for what I'm trying to achieve. Not only do I not have this vast amount of overspray that an airbrush will give us, but it actually allows me to stipple on textures from the very beginning. I'm going for a more realistic, gritty look by the time this army is done, and this will allow me to do that. And yes, using these means that I can avoid hitting areas that I want to keep black for later, but that doesn't mean that I'm being super careful in my application. I am really just kind of stabbing at the model to create this base color without making the entire model look like it's dark blue by the time I'm done. Today's video is brought to us by FartQuest an epic new book series by best-selling and award-winning author Aaron Reynolds. Now, FartQuest is geared towards upper elementary and middle school readers, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here. 
my daughter and I are having a ton of fun reading through the first book together. Growing a child's confidence in reading and building up a healthy imagination is so important, especially as we are trying to grow the next generation of hobbyists and fantasy lovers. I don't know about you, but I can think back to my early days in reading The Hobbit and the Dragonlance novels as a kid, and that was my foundation to where I'm at today. Fart Quest pays homage to Dungeons and Dragons, following a young hero and his friends on fantastical adventures filled with potty humor, feats of bravery, and magical friendships. And if there's one thing I can't get enough of, it's potty humor. So whether you've got kids of your own, or maybe nieces and nephews, or some friends of yours have kids, why not get that shopping done now for their next birthday or holiday gift and introduce them to something that has a special place in your life, and that is fantasy and imagination. I'll put links below to readfartquest.com where you can check out the book as well as check out the free RPG. A big thank you to the FartQuest team for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. All right, let's get back to the painting. Once the base coat is all complete, I'm going to stick with my dry brushes and continue to stipple, this time with Calgar Blue. I'm just going to focus on those areas that are upturned and would catch light naturally. A couple of important tips while using this stippling technique. First, just like any time you use a dry brush, you want to wipe off most of the paint from the brush on a paper towel or a piece of cardboard before you hit the model. And second, you want to make sure that your dry brush for this technique is nice and firm. There are some great makeup dry brushes out there you can get for cheap, but they're pretty floppy. They do have their great uses in other things, but for this, we want a nice firm dry brush. I want to make sure you don't highlight too much in this step. We want to keep some interesting contrast, and that means showing a lot of the dark as well as the light. I think I'm actually only hitting maybe 30% of the model with this first highlight of Calgar Blue. Okay. Recap of day one. Two hours and ten minutes I spent painting tonight, and uh, went a little bit over because I wanted to make sure I got all of the first highlight stippling done before the end of the night and I thought I was going to get through the second highlight of stippling. I still feel like I'm going to need that tomorrow but I may need to reevaluate my total number of steps um, because I'm already feeling behind the eight ball. Hopefully day two goes a little bit better. And then my final step of highlighting, I make sure I go down to a small brush and I stipple on a bright desaturated gray blue. I don't want to go too bright blue for this final highlight because I can't have my Night Lords being mistaken for Ultramarines. Here we just paint a smaller section inside of that first highlight of Kelgar Blue. One thing you want to be doing when you're painting a large group of models is not to be thinking whenever possible. Here I'm just painting within the lines of that first highlight, making it smaller this time and creating more interest, especially around the head and shoulders. got a couple of different units in the army that don't have blue as their main color, like our cultists here. I'm just going to go with a standard dark brown up to a cream color trench coat for them. And later on, I've got my chaos spawn proxies that I'm going to be doing a different color as well. But I feel like I'm going to get burnt out painting all this trim later. So I'm going to, for a change of pace, keep those chaos spawn ready to do at that point. All right, it's time to settle in and crank out all of this detail work. Now, when I'm painting an army, the most important thing that I look for in a paint when I'm doing detail work is paint that can go on in one nice opaque layer that is bright and doesn't need multiple coats. But when it comes to metallics, especially gold, that kind of paint can be very tough to find. Luckily, my buddy Vinci V recently told me about these Green Stuff World pure metal pigments and they are so bright and cover so well it's alarming. I've never used them before this project and while you do have to mix them yourself with a little bit of metal medium, they do create a beautiful, beautiful one coat gold that really pops against our blue armor. Whenever I'm doing detail work on an army, I want one brush 
that can do both the big things and the little things. And for me, that's my Monument Hobbies Size 4 Synthetic. Whether I'm doing a small detail or a large flat surface, this one brush will be able to do the job easily. If you wanna check out the brushes I use or any of the other tools that I feature in my videos, just check the links in the video description and oftentimes we can even get you a nice discount. After painting a few of these gold trim bastards, I realized that there are a ton of areas of trim that are very, very hard to reach and most of them you can't even see unless you have the model turned upside down at a very odd angle. So I did what any logical person would do, and I quit painting those sections. Yeah, I said it. Didn't paint them. You'll never know. There's two reasons why I did this and why I think you should do it too. First, if I'm holding a model three inches from my face and I have to squint for two minutes to find the areas that I don't think that I painted, it's not worth my time to paint them in the first place. And number two, we're gonna make these Night Lords gritty and grimy later anyway, so they're just gonna be covered over with a different layer of paint, which is gonna look like shadow instead of the bright gold that would naturally hit light. Well, this is going terribly. Um, two hours in tonight and I'm only maybe, if I'm lucky, halfway done with all this stupid gold trim. Whoever decided to do Chaos Space Marines with their tiny filigree around every bit of armor they have is a moron. Don't ever do this. This is bad. I'm going to have to figure out if there are other certain details I'm going to have to cut from my paint process. And I can't even tell if this thing's going to look good yet or not, so... Mistakes were made. To prevent making mistakes while I'm working on things like trim on models, I try to keep my brush pressure pretty light, meaning I'm just barely touching the brush to the model. Just enough so the paint flows off the brush, but I'm not squishing it into the model and losing control over where the paint goes. And if you do make a mistake, and it's gonna happen, quickly assess how big of a mistake it is. If it's minor, I just leave it. If it's a big one, I quickly rinse my brush then take that clean, wet brush and wipe it over the mistake while the paint is still wet. I repeat this a couple of times with the rinsing and the wiping, and the mistake should just disappear. All right. Well, it is a Wednesday night, uh, two hours and ten minutes tonight to finish up. Not all of the gold. I still have one more stupid fucking turkey to paint. Now that all the stupid gold is done, I feel a sense of relief. Get out of here. It is finally beyond what I think to be the biggest hurdle of the project, and I've got a new sense of energy. So let's get at it. Let's assess all the other details that we're gonna need to paint by brush. First of all, we wanna keep this number of colors minimal. The less colors that we have on the model, the more we're gonna have our attention focused on the main colors. So for us here, it's the gold trim and the blue armor. Oh, and the more colors you add, the more time you are committing for very little payoff. These extra colors aren't here to actually improve the final army look. They're just here to make sure it looks like you didn't forget to paint something on the models. And quite frankly, you can leave some of these things black and it will still look great later. Um, I got through all of the silver today in one evening. That felt good. I didn't think there was that much silver. I was wrong. Um, it took a long time. But I have the end in sight of all my detail work in terms of other colors. Unfortunately, I think I picked too many extra colors to paint all this stuff. So I might have to cut this down tomorrow. But my goal is to have most, if not all, of the detail work done tomorrow night. Please let that happen. I did want to use a bright red for the army as an accent color because that is the color of the Night Lord's insignia. I also picked up some awesome custom heads and shoulder pads from Puppets of War, and I wanted to make sure that those were highlighted so my army felt unique. I grabbed a bone color that I know covers really well, and I hit every horn, insignia, and skull because this is Warhammer and there's got to be 7,000 skulls. Oh, and it's Friday, a little bit over two hours tonight, and I'm feeling energized. I got through quite a bit of stuff with reds, with bones, 
with little bits of browns and such and uh, just have the skin colors to do tomorrow and then I'm ready for the fun part which is weathering and all those details at the end that hopefully we'll pull this all together. And the last detail that I'm working up by brush is the actual skin tone for all of my duders that don't have their helmets on. I'm also gonna use this same color for my chaos spawn because I want them to feel cohesive with the rest of the army. So I'm gonna go back and paint those start to finish and I'm gonna start with a nice deep reddish crimson color for the base color for them so they can feel like they've got more depth and interest as undead vampire spawn monster guys. I go right back to my big dry brushes and use the same approach that I used earlier to knock these out quickly, going from one color and then up and then up. Here I decided to have more highlights at each level because I wanted the skin to be a nice pale final color. I decided I want a little bit more areas of interest on these chaos spawn models, so I decided to add some contrast paint to the webbing in the wings. Where the orange met the black, I just kind of swished them together and made a real quick and easy blend. Contrast works well for this because it dries particularly slow and it's not hard to blend two colors together. Sunday morning, and I forgot to record last night uh, to give you the update on Saturday. And we had a little monkey wrench. Saturday was a busy day around our household. And I also had my regular D&D &D session. So I got in less than two hours of work yesterday on Saturday when I had planned to do around four hours to help finish this up. Now that's life. Now let's get on to the fun part. Night Lords like to scavenge anything from the battlefield that they may be able to use, whether it be armor or weapons or other fancy gear or like a Capri Sun, granola bars, stuff like that. And so there's no reason why they should be bright and clean and shiny. Anytime we paint a large number of models, it's important that we still define each section with some form of a wash. But for these guys, I'm gonna bust out the good old streaking grime. One thing that's great about these enamels is you can use them right out of the bottle. You don't have to worry about how much to thin them like you do in making your own oil wash. They also work awesome whether you apply them with a brush or an airbrush. Now, like I said, I'm keeping airbrushing in this project to a bare minimum, and you did not need an airbrush for this step. I was a little bit nervous on being able to finish this army by the end of the weekend, which is why I went with the airbrush here. But honestly, it probably only saved me like 10 or 15 minutes across the whole army using the airbrush over a paintbrush. And no matter how you apply an enamel or even an oil wash, the more important detail is how you remove it. So what I'm going to do is take these nice little makeup sponges and I'm going to first focus on all the time that we spent highlighting up the armor and we're going to remove all of that enamel from those areas. From there, I hit all the upturned facing surfaces and I'm going to allow the enamels to still stay in the cracks and crevices to create some nice definition across the model and overall give us a broken down dirty look. Now at this point, our army is looking great and you should have no problem taking them straight to the table for a game tomorrow. But based on how much time we have left, I'm gonna take all of my final little tricks to try to ramp up the army to look as cool as I can before my weekend is done. First things first, Sheila here, which I kit bash in a previous video right there, she needs a lot more rustiness going on because she's got a lot of metal on her. And for that, I love to use another enamel product called Rust Streaks. I just slosh this all over the place. You can dab it off if there's areas that you want to make sure are staying silver. But for me, I just didn't paint everything with this coat. Next, we need a nice, bright, vibrant pop of color somewhere on these models. So when we're 10, 15, 20 feet away at a tournament, they still can show even with a dark, grimy look. And for that, I'm gonna have a nice glowing red eye and other things I want glowing. And for that, I'm gonna use the brightest red I know imaginable, and that is The Red by Camara. To start, I'm gonna paint everything I want glowing with a full, thick, opaque white paint. This way, anything we paint on top will even show brighter and it will look as if it's the source of the red glow. 
Now, just like with the enamel wash, you don't need to use an airbrush for this step. What you do instead is just thin down your red quite a bit on your palette. And then with the brush, you're gonna create many layers of building up that red over time. And don't be afraid of like swiping it over areas around the glowing eyes so it looks like it's coming from them. So the final thing we're gonna paint on our Night Lords are their notorious lightning bolts. I just paint some jagged lines, how I envision lightning bolts look in my head, and I have them fork here and there. I do want to avoid the darkest areas of the armor, and I also want to avoid the brightest highlights that we've already painted. I don't want the lightning bolts to take away from the work we've already done underneath. I then just grab that brown that I already used for my cultist robes and I do a quick dry brush over all the bases so it has a nice neutral tone and you can start to pick up some of the texture created by our dirt and sand. And from there I grab Old Rust, a Vallejo pigment color, and I kind of mash that into the bases on a couple of different points. And this creates a nice interest. It makes your base look like it's got something special going on. It doesn't cost you hardly any time. Oh, and this reminds me, people often ask if they need to varnish their model in between the enamel steps and going back to acrylics. And they'll also ask if they need to varnish the model after they apply their pigment powders. So first, with enamels and oils, no. As long as they are dried and cured, you can go right over the top of them. Enamels actually dry quite a bit faster than oils, which is nice for a speed painting project. But either one of them, once they're dried and cured, are quite a bit stronger than acrylic paints anyway. And as far as the pigment powders, if you varnish over top of them, you kill the color by quite a bit. You also kill that really interesting variation in finish. Pigment powders are really dry and matte looking, and if you varnish over them, it's just gonna pull it all together and it's not gonna have much of an impact. If you're worried about it spreading everywhere, you can sure do that, but honestly, I've never had any problem putting pigment powders on my bases and having them just stay there. And here we are, the finished Night Lord's Army. And even as I second guessed how this whole project was going to turn out because I didn't do a test model and I was trying a lot of these things in an army like this for the very first time, once it was all together and you see them, you will be proud of what you've created. And it can be a tough thing to keep in mind because we paint an army one model at a time and not until the very end do we see how they all look like together. But oh baby. It's worth it. So now that we've finished painting this army and checked every excuses box, what say you? Did I miss a different reason why you haven't got your army painted? Is that something that I should keep in mind? Put that down in the comments below. Also, I mentioned that I didn't quite get this army to where I'd like it. Do you think there's value in me coming back and cranking this army up to 11 in a later video? If you think that's a good idea, let me know in the comments below on that one as well. Thank you for hanging out and painting an army with me today. I hope you had a good time. I know that I did, and I can't wait to see these Night Lords on the gaming table. If you like what I do and you want to support me in making more videos, the main way that you can do that is consider joining my Patreon campaign. I've got a link to that in the video description. Not only do you get to help me keep doing this kind of stuff, but you also get a bunch of fun rewards as well like access to my private Discord server where we can hang out and talk about Night Lords every day of the week, and you get access to my weekly vlog videos. Thanks once again for hanging out. Now, get out of here. Go slay the gray. <laughs>